All right, we're live. Okay, great. Uh, I'm Dominic Marcelino, uh, VP of AirFinder, and welcome to our webinar, uh, the Link Labs webinar on the AirFinder Super Tag. I'm joined by Brian Ray, our founder and CTO, and Patrick Lee, our VP of Engineering. And we're really excited to introduce this product uh, to you and talk a bit about how we are uh, addressing the problem of doing indoor and outdoor asset tracking and monitoring. Um, <clears throat> As we get into uh, as we get into this today, uh, I wanted to do a little overview of what we're going to be talking about and how we're doing this. Patrick's going to be on a live chat with the people that have joined us. He's sitting on the other side, of us, so. <laughs> so he's going to give us some oh, questions <laughs> at the end. Uh, so please talk to him during the during the presentation. Uh, ask him your, your questions and the ones that uh, he thinks are best for the the group at large. He'll bubble up at the end, and we can talk about them. Um, the flow of the webinar is going to be like this. We're going to talk a bit about who we are, who is Link Labs, and why are we here, um, specifically focusing on challenges and opportunities in doing indoor-outdoor asset tracking and monitoring. There's great solutions for one and the other, but we try to bring a solution together to solve both of those. Uh, and we do that with our AirFinder network and the AirFinder SuperTag that we're going to talk about today. Uh, and the way that we're going to elucidate that is talk about three use cases. There are a lot of them. Uh, we hope they're pretty illustrative of what the super tag can do. And then obviously we'll answer your questions and look forward to engaging with you afterwards. Uh, for those that are registered, you'll have access to the webinar. Uh, we'll send out a link afterwards. It's and actually the same the same YouTube link. So oh, good. Well, there you go. There. You can just watch it again. Uh, all the highlights from the first time that you saw it. And, uh, and we'll look forward to talking to you, uh, either engaging with us or with our sales team to answer questions that you have. Um, and if you have a question that you want us to answer during the webinar, just type it in the chat, mm -hmm. and then Patrick will write, either, write, either answer right away, write it down, or patently ignore you, depending on the <laughs> question. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll try to get to it. So we really are live. This is yep. actually, actually live. Right. Um, we've had webinars completely blow up, and like die halfway through, but we've got like three computers connected, so hopefully that doesn't happen today. <laughs> yeah. Uh, looks like we got three, about 400 people watching live right now, which is great. Um, usually that number kind of lags, so we'll see, see what we get to. Um, yeah. So clearly there's a lot of interest, but yeah, let me just jump in and introduce sure. Link Labs. So uh, some people get confused between Link Labs and AirFinder. Right. So Link Labs is our company and AirFinder is the product. Um, there's two different websites. Um, you know, Link Labs really got its start. We're a five-year-old company that I founded with the engineering team here, and we have always been focused on doing really innovative, low-power, long-range wireless products. And um, we were big into LoRa early on. We have we continue to do a lot with LoRa, but also now with LTEM. And over time, what we've noticed is that the biggest opportunity that we see in the Internet of Things is all about tracking assets and monitoring them for you know, inter enterprise and industrial customers. Yeah. So that's been our, our laser focus now for about two years, and hence the AirFinder product development. We still have plenty of customers using our LoRa and our LTEM devices. AirFinder is probably the biggest growth area for us as a company. Um, and um, I'm not going to get distracted by the questions I see popping up from my computer <laughs> away. Um, Patrick's feverishly writing, so I'm sure he'll get to us. Um, but yeah, so you know, our, our team, like I said, primarily focused on, on using different technologies to really enable location. And what we found is that you need to combine technologies together in ways that make the system work for whatever the customer is trying to do, whether that's you know, get really long battery lives, track anywhere it goes, uh, have a super low cost tag, you know, get pinpoint accuracy. Like all of these things are kind of at odds with each other and we have a grab back of technologies that we've kind of blended together. The thing that we're really focusing on today is what we call the super tag, right. um, which is, and I'm sure Dominic will get, get into this, but which is really cool because it is a, um, you know, kind of a more heavy duty asset tag that uses LTEM as its backhaul or one of its backhauls so that it can do location outdoors, but also indoors using Bluetooth reference and stuff, which he's going to get yeah. into. Absolutely. Um, Right, and and thanks for the background, Brian. Obviously, you founded the company. <laughs> and, opening and the box. Exactly, a bit. <laughs> exactly. You're you're uh, you're jumping ahead because we're really excited about the super tag. But where our focus on asset tracking came from 
has been from the beginning in our cu in our customer conversations, people have wanted to track where things are. It started with our Laura products. They wanted to know where things were outside. They wanted to integrate GPS and other tracking technologies to do campus level tracking. And for for years now, people have asked us, what can we do in for indoor tracking? And so we saw indoor tracking requests. We saw outdoor tracking requests. We knew a lot about the indoor indoor existing technologies. We, we knew how to enable GPS, but all of the pieces to combine that together to do exactly what you said weren't necessarily there, but we know that there are use cases in manufacturing and in logistics. There's specialty rack tracking. There's tool and equipment tracking, personnel tracking. There are myriad others where the ability to do fine-grained indoor tracking as well as do, do tracking outside all in one device, all in one system, is what customers are looking for. It's what industrial and enterprise customers are looking well, for. Well, for those use cases. I mean, there's Absolutely. obviously use cases where, you know, our, you know, more, I'll call it, you know, simple air finder sure. system where you, you know, just have right. Bluetooth tags and stuff like that. And indoor is obviously really popular, but. It know. builds off of, of you know, we developed air finder, which we'll talk about, and where we found a sweet spot, which is why we developed the super tag was, was taking one step further and enabling seamless tracking across both of those things. Yes, absolutely. Because really, there is uh, there's a moment now uh, in technology development where there's low power, low data rate, long range technologies that can start to get at exactly what we're talking about. How do I do outdoor tracking that doesn't have to be a device that's plugged into an ODB2 port or has an enormous battery that can leverage other uh, location technologies besides GPS? And those technologies range from LTEM to NB-IoT, uh, LoRa, like we said, there are others. Um, and they take tracking technologies or locating technologies. Uh, or yeah, and I, do that. and I think it's worth saying that, like, the definitely the point of this webinar is not to geek out on <laughs> LTM versus NBIT versus LoRa. I'm I love geeking out on that stuff. <laughs> I'm not gonna um, lie, but like, we really see all of these technologies more as just tools. They're enabling tools. Yeah, yeah, because the thing that you buy isn't NBIT. It's no. where Some is application. the palette? Yeah, you know? exactly. And so. We know that people want to track things outside, and they have limitations. We know we want, they want to track things inside, and they have limitations. And so really, we see there being a couple of technical and business challenges that need to be overcome. Uh, and we have a solution. There are others. Uh, GPS doesn't work inside, despite the fact that we say this to our customers over and over. Lots of people think that it does. But if you have a GPS-only tag, once you go inside, yeah, and, deep in a and we and we kind of laugh because we know we know a lot about GPS, but you know, for those of you that aren't as familiar, yeah. you know, there's satellites in space from the '60s <laughs> transmitting signals that are picked up by tiny, tiny microchips with horrible antennas. So they they don't work through you know the roof of your building, right? You have to have pretty much a clear view of the sky. And there's other reasons why GPS has issues, sure. but. You know, that's 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 the reason. And there's lots of other technologies that can be combined, like we do and others do, to do outdoor location tracking. And on the indoor side, there are technologies that have been around for years that do a great job of, of potentially even really fine-grained location down to a centimeter level, uh, ultra-wideband, ultrasonic, infrared, passive RFID. There are others. They're often um, they've been in the warehousing and in the healthcare space, and uh, you know. They have a lot of, uh, they've been used yeah. widely there as well. Yeah, for the applications that need accuracy like that, those things are amazing. Sure. Companies that we're working with do need indoor tracking, sometimes down to you know one or two meters or better, uh, but they also potentially need things outside, which is where we started thinking about how we can bring technologies together to do that. Yeah, it's like you know in the back of the truck in Omaha and where is it in the warehouse? Is, has always been tough to solve with a single system. Absolutely, and I guess the other thing that we've learned by being out in the world with our customers is cellular networks are everywhere, but they're not equally strong everywhere. And often where people are doing important business work uh, in manufacturing <laughs> and warehousing and other places, uh, cellular networks tend to not be uh, we've, very strong. We laugh because Dominic and I have both been in, you know, plants in the middle of nowhere trying to figure out how we're going to get connected to the cellular network and, and learn the hard way that they don't prioritize uh, these giant facilities often. No, and and, uh, and so you know that's where we can also leverage our the, our LoRa technology to create, I think, this a solution to this problem. Um, but as we think about you know what would it take to have a, a solution in the indoor and, and outdoor tracking space? So it's it's not just a you know air finder inside. It's not just a super tag. Basically, it's everything. A full solution is going to have several features to it. It has to be possible to do fine grain indoor location, but it can't be really expensive. 
Um, we want a, a single device and a single solution that allows seamless tracking indoors and outdoors without having to combine a bunch of different technologies. We want the ability for tags to last for years. Uh, there might be reasons that you have a tag that reports lots of times a day and you need to recharge the batteries, which is fine. But long live tags, uh, I think are really important. Um, you have to have some ability to do cellular fill-in, but you also want to have a scalable solution and you want it to be cost and data effective. Cellular fill-in is? Cellular fill-in would be how do I, if, if the cellular coverage ends at like the warehouse I'll wall, on the microphone now. which we see happen all of the time, uh, how do I then actually, without using uh, the internal network of a customer, provide fill in and full coverage for indoor right. tracking, which is where you know, yeah. and, and I think it's also worth mentioning. You talked about you know battery life. Obviously, everybody wants tiny devices that last forever. Yeah, it's all about energy and how can you you know both calculate your location as, with using as little energy as possible, and then just send that information to you know to the cloud, to the internet, or wherever the server is as efficiently as possible, which is why, you know, like making a Bluetooth connection if you can is obviously better than trying to sling, you know, a full, you know, one watt LTE signal, uh, you know, five miles away. Um, and that those all come down to what the network looks like and how often you're transmitting and, you know, yep. all sorts of other things as well. Exactly. So, oh, so, and, I, and I should mention oh, yeah. that GPS is a phantom power hog. Like right. it is... Definitely. There's a lot of math that has to happen inside a tiny chip to make GPS work, and it it burns pretty significant power, especially for something that you know is supposed to last for years. You, you don't really notice it with your smartphone because the thing is already, you know, burning you know many many milliamps at a time. Yeah. But for something you're trying to last ten years and you're using GPS, it's a disaster. Yeah. So as we look at uh, you know when we're working with our customers, it's not just uh, what the hardware costs, you know, what one tag versus another costs, what the infrastructure internally costs, what the services and software costs, what the cellular fees are. It's actually all those together. It's the total cost of ownership. And if you have uh, some of these requirements, which we see in countless use cases, you actually have to have not only the combination of all the technologies, but you have to have an offering where the total cost of ownership is low, and that's what we think that we've we've stumbled upon with uh, with the SuperTech inside of our AirFinder network. Yeah, so we see this as a challenge. The challenge is how can customers get uh, the ability to do indoor and outdoor tracking uh, for different use cases. Uh, depending on their needs. So some things are only inside. Like if I have specialty tools and equipment um, and I'm in a warehouse or in a manufacturing facility, those things should never leave. Maybe I need to get alerted if they go outside, but for the most part, those are inside. Yeah, and those can use simpler tags. They don't. Exactly. And so maybe a little bit of background on the AirFinder side. Would you want to jump in and, and yeah, describe I mean, how that kind of works? AirFinder has been a, you know, like an odyssey in a way. Like we started off you know, doing very traditional Bluetooth location where you have beaconing tags and, you know, receivers that hear those and try to calculate the position. And we've kind of flipped around now where we're doing more with reference point beacons and smart tags that calculate their own positions. And then how that tag, when it's inside, reports its position up is kind of where the variability is. Like the super tag we're talking about now, those generally report either directly via LTE or LoRa instead of always via Bluetooth, which right. is what we do in an indoor only system where you kind of can fence off the area where you need the system to perform. For the super tag, you need a system that's gonna give you great accuracy indoors, but when the thing gets in a truck and you know, it's driving halfway across the country and can't get GPS, like you still can get an update of where it is. Exactly. <clears throat> By the way, are, are we good on questions? Or are there any so far that you think we need to answer or should we wait till the end? Because I. Sometimes um, it, you can just say keep going. I can just keep going. <laughs> keep going. Got it. Yeah. So just to reiterate what Brian just described in the way that AirFinder works, because it's always good to to be sure that you know what we're offering is clear. The AirFinder asset tracking system is based in the end on Bluetooth low energy tags that are connected to the things or with the things that people and our customers care about. Um, they could be specialty racks, it could be tools, it could be equipment, it could be badge tags for staff uh, or personnel. Uh, pretty much anything that you might want to track uh, using a really low cost device that uh, depending on how large the battery is that we can have uh, work for years. And that's going to be primarily for indoor location um, use cases. And what we set on top of that is a, is a network, a Bluetooth network that actually provides the raw data for the tags to locate themselves. And that's sort of the unique approach that we take to indoor locationing. Those tags uh, 
are, are event driven in the sense that they only send information through our network when there's a change uh, in their location or a change in their status or their, their heart beating to let us know that they're still alive. We tried to make the system as quiet as possible to allow there to be as many tags as possible because we find that there are either um, people have lots of uh, tags in one particular place or they're moving around frequently and we want a network that actually can handle that and scale across tens of thousands of tags in a single location. So those access points are a conduit to our, our LoRa network. So on the one hand, they're, they're talking Bluetooth with the tags, they're providing the, law, the raw data as, as beacons for the tags to, to locate themselves. And then they also are a way to pass data up and down from tags to the network and back down. Uh, you know, but one of the things we talked about is moving beyond just locating something inside where uh, and, you know, an access point only air finder network would give you accuracy around two to 5,000 square feet and we can convert that to meters. It's like, I think it's like 250 to 450 square meters. Um, but what we can do is add uh, granularity to our location um, uh, offering without um, affecting backhaul costs and prices at a, at a very low price point, namely adding Bluetooth beacons as reference points to the system where we can do fill in down to uh, at the desk level, something like one to two meters of accuracy. Patrick's making a face when we're talking about costs, I think there's a lot of people interested. Like, what, what do you want to say on the webinar about, you know, how to think about the cost of something like this? And, I mean, obviously, we're not going to throw out numbers specifically because yeah, so, you know, there's so many. Of course, there's a lot of variability. And, you know, one of the other things that we did that's, that's innovative that we probably don't talk enough about is while we have hardware for sale, what we've done is designed a system that doesn't hold us to any specific Bluetooth device. We're not a Bluetooth hardware manufacturing Thank company. Okay. Yeah. We developed a Bluetooth profile and an approach to using Bluetooth that allows us to go find uh, or make uh, the solution that somebody needs at the device level. Yeah, I mean, I think probably like 95% of yeah. all of our Bluetooth-based tags are built by ODMs right. that offer Bluetooth tags to anybody, and we just load a custom profile on there. So. You know, and the other thing that we should say right now before we get into it is that those tags can also be sending things other than location. They can be sending sensor data and they can be included with the tag. So if you have a temperature and humidity Bluetooth sensor and it sends this location, we're getting the temperature data. Yeah, and I, mean, your well. I would say, you know, there's a good percentage of use cases where that temperature shock piece of it is as valuable as the location, if not more so. Absolutely. Um, you know, we have Absolutely. customers in, you know, pharmaceuticals monitoring temperatures of shipments, you know, with calibrated temperature devices. And for them, the temp the location is a nice to have, the temperature yeah. is a must have. It's right. a, it's a yeah. regulatory and a safety requirement. Absolutely. Just to give some general figures on an indoor tracking, you know, cost uh, system, this, the cost of an air finder system. Um, you know, we have some deployments in the, in the two to 300,000 square feet um, uh, range. These are manufacturing facilities and the hardware costs for tracking 1,000 tags with the full network capabilities and uh, asset, or sorry, access points and reference points come under $100,000. It's usually between like 75 and $100,000. Um, the tags themselves range from like the high single digits up to the the low twenties, depending on how big the batteries are and the other and the how other hard elements. they are, and like it could be a little bit more. Logos exactly. So if it's you know a class one div two requirement for um, you know oil and gas or for um, for uh, construction, those cost more. Uh, but we have really small tags that are going to last for several months. But I think I do think it's worth mentioning that for super tag specifically, I mean it is a great way to get into a system with that doesn't need really any of that you know super expensive infrastructure. Exactly. That so that's AirFinder, and then so what's the super tag? So an indoor system looks like this. The Bluetooth tags uh, are, are how we do indoor tracking. But then we, ha we have designed a new solution that brings four different radio technologies together to do indoor outdoor tracking. Inside, the super tag, as you see here, works just like any other Bluetooth device. It's listening for our access points. It's listening for reference points. It's running its location algorithm. And, and it's it, very power efficient. It's, it's running it as power efficiently as, uh, as a, ranch, a regular Bluetooth device would be. And it talks through our access points via Bluetooth. And that's great. So if I'm if I'm a specialty rack company and uh, say where I have specialty racks in order to do shipping of my products, and these racks end up at my at uh, my manufacturing partners, 
when I'm inside of the facility uh, making these things, I want uh, I want to know where they are. I'm going to have process driven improvement data that I want to draw out of the system. So where were they? How long were they there? Um, this is all good and can be collected via our, our AirFinder network. But those also get shipped to customers and they don't always come back. And that ends up being the big rub is that you have, in, in, you have inventory costs that you don't want to, to have. Uh, you end up with, with lost um, with lost materials. And more importantly, uh, you can even delay shipments if you don't have the right piece of equipment in order to put things together. But if you put an, a super tag on that, you know, you can solve the problem because once it leaves the facility, it has three different ways of locating itself and can use a completely different network to talk to the internet. How are, what are those three ways it can locate itself? So Dominic. Yeah, the three ways it can locate itself. It has a GPS receiver. So if it has uh, the ability to, to hear the messages or to hear the satellites that are out there, it can locate itself via GPS. It has a it has a Wi-Fi sniffer, so it listens to the VSS IDs of the Wi-Fi networks that it can hear, just like your phone when you. Sort Which of is actually, you know, if you're not familiar, is probably the best way to mm. locate yourself these days because there's so much signal margin that this air this super tag can be, you know, in a box, in a truck, you know, in a city, and we're still getting great location because there's just so much Wi-Fi on the air, and there's so much information out there about where those Wi-Fi networks are. Absolutely. Where you're never going to get GPS. Yep. And then the final way. The final way is actually cell ID. So you know, at, at some level, uh, it, if it can hear the Verizon network and can talk to that network, it can say. Or other carrier partners. You're right. Absolutely. <laughs> Eventually, other carrier partners, where I see who we have right now. Um, we could we could give that as a gross uh, location. So that's you know a thousand meters or more. The Wi-Fi is going to be somewhere. It can be better. It can be better. Uh, it could also be worse. Yes. So gives you a, a rough order of magnitude. But like the the example that you mentioned, I don't know if you're going to get to this later. But you know if you put just a simple reference point beacon at your customer's loading dock, then you get immediately associated with that. Even if you have to report it via LTE, you're still like, I know I'm right here. So it's a nice. Exactly. So we can talk about that with the with the first use case. But really, it's extensible without having to engage in an infrastructure, you know, an IT integration with your customer as well. A simple device you can put on site, and the tags can the super tags can continue to locate themselves. So in addition to the three ways that it can locate itself outside of the AirFinder network, it also has inbuilt sensors, which can deliver other value like we were talking about. It's got a temperature sensor. It's got an accelerometer that allows us to do shock and vibration uh, sensing. And you know what we think is really cool is it's one device that allows you to do indoor and outdoor tracking. How easy is it to deploy? You literally put it into our UI, and you connect. You put the device on the thing that you're tracking, and you're you're up and running. And the integration with the on the back end is something that we we make easier and easier over time. That's something that's available to any of our customers that want to do that. Um, anything else you want to you want know, to add about? No, that? I mean I, I think it's in a, in a format like this, it's hard to get into the super details. You know, if if you're interested in the super tag, yeah. and you want to learn more, obviously reach out to us at I think the probably sales at link-labs.com yep, is probably the, the best place it and is. have a conversation with us. We can get into the details. And that's why we do these webinars is to just show enough to get people interested. Yeah. Um, and and where in the past we've been really technolo like technology focused, we've been talking about technology landscapes and, and sort of how we see things developing. We wanted to focus here on on the business case and what the... Well, what just the looking at the number of people viewing, I think it, this is more interesting because I think this may be the most people we've ever had on a webinar. Oh, really? So, yeah. Well, that's great. Um, so, you know, I think that people can can think their way into use cases, but we wanted to highlight three where we feel that the super tag is really valuable. Those are really nice icons, by the way. Which you made. <laughs> uh, so use case one is uh, what does the super tag look like in, in a manufacturing process? And specifically, it's not just on the manufacturing floor. It's not just um, it's not just shipping it to somebody. It also could be receiving the the inputs, which could be coming from your specific suppliers, and you need to be able to plan around when it's going to be there. Yeah, I think it's worth homing in on that point. Yeah. It's like you've got to integrate as an OEM, a bunch of components that yeah. come from a bunch of different suppliers and knowing like exactly when they're going to arrive, like down to the hour, yeah. uh, can really help you sequence manufacturing processes and labor availability. Without a doubt. And then and it arrives. Then it arrives. And, and even and, and a brief thing interlude there is that sometimes the shipments then sit out in a, a laydown yard waiting to be brought on. And you needed to kind of know where they are outside while they're waiting. But let's say that it's yeah, now. I, mean, I remember this customer that. Yeah was constantly losing tens of thousands worth dollars worth of I don't want to call it raw materials but like you know stuff that they were going to integrate cuz it was in this giant lot and they just didn't even know 
which truck it was yeah. because it got put in the wrong spot. Right. And they would they had these expediters whose whole job was to go out and search for stuff. Right. Which we think that the super tag becomes a problem of the past. But we've we've made we've planned, I've made labor available. we the shipment comes, I, I unbox and unpack my shipments and I take the supplies into into my manufacturing process. If I have to tag specific elements of that, I can I can watch um, the I could watch at the pallet level. I could watch at the individual device level as the components are assembled into the final products. And then at the sort of packing and shipping uh, side of things, I can still have availability. I can still have visibility on what's going on and take. Uh, I can take a package, uh, put a super tag with it, and send it off to to my customer. Or, you know, on the use case that we talked about before, the the rack that the supplies are going in to the to the customer. Yeah, I mean, I think. Patrick's asking for a specific use case. I think this is as specific as we can really get because mm -hmm. our customers are super, um, you know. How about, I, I'll give an example that, that doesn't, uh, I'll give an example of somebody that probably should be our customer but isn't. Um, so they are a manufacturer of a, of a large uh, uh, consumer object uh, and they have uh, suppliers all over the country um, who, and, and they're receiving over uh, 70 shipments a day. So they got 70 uh, truckloads of materials that are coming to their facility every single day. Some of the truckloads are immediately unloaded. Some of the loads sit down in the laydown yard. They need to know what's in the laydown yard. They need to know what has been unloaded into the facility. Um, <clears throat> those parts are then go into the manufacturing process. Uh, and at, in, that, in that particular process, we would add a tag to you know, we'll call it the fundamental unit of, of, of what ends up being the end product. And that's going to go through a series of manufacturing process steps. And so um, in, in whip manufacturing or work in progress tracking, which we work on with a number of customers, um, it isn't just uh, how long it takes for the object uh, that's being made. Um, you know, it could be anything from, you know, a car to an, to an engine to, to whatever, you know, it's not, step one to the end, it's actually the several process, process steps in between. Yeah, and like when you add something like this into it, it's obvious like complex manufacturers already have whip tracking through like sure. barcode scans and other things. This is just layering on additional capability where you can, you know, you can gather additional analytics, you can look for exceptions, you can find stuff that gets misrouted. Yep, absolutely. So, and, and we've also seen a number of customers want to have alerting around uh, in, in that process, as the, as the device is moving from step one to step two, that transition period, once they, they want to minimize how long that is and they need to, me, they need to, to let people know that that's uh, it's ready to go, the next people need to pick it up to take it into zone two. And you can benchmark across those transitions, but also inside of each of those zones. And then as, as, the, as the final product is ready for shipment, uh, you can use a different super tag or the same one to track that uh, either the full shipment or the individual elements to to the end customer and you know that obviously provides value across a variety of of, of use cases that one manufacturing customer might have um that's why we're really excited about the super tech being available because that really builds out from uh air finder networks that we're using you know in building for manufacturing and, and now takes it visibility as the supplies come and as the as the finished products are going to customers got it you know, at a, at a higher level, you know, we see the super tech competing with a variety of tracking products like we talked about. The most obvious example would be existing GPS tracking devices, of which there tons. are tons. And uh, they do. They're all on my desk. Actually. They're, all, <laughs> they're all on your desk. They do a great job. Half of our salespeople used to sell them. You know, telematics is a well-established uh, piece of, uh, you know, industry. And we don't believe that the super tag is going to replace all of them, but we do know a couple things about the future of telematics. First of all, a lot of the existing devices rely on 2G and 3G networks, which are being phased out. Right. They and are, they use a lot more energy to exactly. To. That's why they're probably connected often to the the trucks and the trailers themselves, or they have huge batteries and or uh, solar panels or solar panels. And they probably come along with if they're not 2G 3G, they also potentially come along with very. But I honestly, costs. I I really can't poo poo too much a great 2G 3G like powered GPS tracker no for like vehicle telematics because it works. It works absolutely. And we're not saying it doesn't work, but if you need to do, if you need to have a replacement for those products as they're phased out, and if you want to do more than uh, just track where things are uh, at the telematics level, but what's in your shipments, something like the super tag could be could be right for you. Yeah. So it's not really necessarily like vehicle trackers. I, I think that's a market that yeah, it's just we're not really in. But yeah. it's more about condition monitoring in logistics. 
you know, whether it's mm -hmm. inside of a box, shipping container, et cetera, where like those are that really long battery life and the ability to track in multi modes is really valuable. And it, I think it actually underscores one of the things that we can do, which is in process or in motion and in transit tracking of conditions. So that there could be exceptions that we program into the device that have it register, you know, uh, if they're tracking and sending a signal every hour, but there is a, a temperature event that we need to report, it can actually, you know, the devices themselves can intervene, let us know, let the driver know, uh, let the customer know that something something is happening. But but really the value of, of our approach is in optimizing across these, these necessary elements. It needs to be power optimized. We want these devices to last for a long time and not be plugged into their into the truck or the trailer. We want the data efficiency that we that we get from our approach to LTEM that allows us to get more usable bytes and per you know payload bytes per transmission with lower overhead. That reduces the overall cost of, of GPS tracking and, and cell and cell basically cell enabled GPS tracking. And then you know I guess the key thing about the SuperTag is obviously that it's usable indoors and outdoors, which we think that uh, is it makes it very compelling. Yeah. You know, one one final uh, use case, which uh, we're not also competing with data loggers, but you know, we see the SuperTag as an analog to them, something that you can compare. If I'm using data logging uh, in order to keep track of some sort of um, temperature controlled uh, shipment or use case. A super tag might be the right solution for you. So this could be pharmaceutical. Yeah, is this is basically like think of it like really long lot lived cold chain monitoring with location. Yep, especially if uh, you're, if the situation right now is you have data loggers that give you all of the data, the temperature data over uh, shipment, and tell you that what you what you just received is spoiled, so you don't maybe like give it to somebody and they get sick yeah. and die. Yeah, this is a space that the, there's a lot of connected the, trackers in. Absolutely, sure. it's just another place where the super tag offers some value, especially if you need to track the shipments before they leave uh, in transit and when they arrive. The super tag is, has has the ability to do that, and the best part is. There's no there's no manual downloading of the data that's collected by the super tag over time. It transmits the data that it has, um, and uh, you know you can receive alerts as, as you need to uh, as you as you program before they go out. Um, <clears throat> you know, sort of in closing, before we get to the the questions and answers, I think it's probably useful to just highlight again some of the ways that that the super tag provides value. Um, you know, we haven't shown it this yet because it isn't part of this particular webinar. But there's a fully fleshed out user interface that that AirFinder lives in. We have. Yeah, I think we should do. I think what we'll do is maybe we'll send out like a video. Yeah. Show how like it showing works. it how it works. Like if you really want to nerd out on the interface and the right. hardware and stuff like that. So it isn't just a device where you have to develop your user interface uh, or you have to pull data by by default in order for you to know where things are to get any sort of value out of the data. We have we've developed everything in one user interface. Uh, you can also do a data integration if you want to. Some customers do. Some customers don't. Um, but you know the way that you'd use a super tag to deliver value be beyond location is to think about some of the things that our customers are telling us about is that I need to know either condition-based uh, updating and alerting, or I want to have I want to have information about location at this particular cadence. It's once an hour. It's it's multiple times an hour. It's once a day. It's it's only when moved. These are the sorts of things that customers tell us about. Obviously, when you're doing location, especially outside, but also inside, you want to have the ability to do geofencing and say you know, things should not go uh, in this area, or when they come into this particular area, I want to have an alert. We can do that both inside and outside with with AirFinder. Um, what's really exciting, obviously, is the ability to to have fine grain indoor location at low cost, like we talked about, and you know, reporting and, and analytics are you know where we're growing the user interface. We can do we can have duration of time on site or how long something's been in in transit. Uh, we can do exception tracking, all those sorts of things. And in terms of the value proposition, you know, in the end. We see the super tag as the lowest cost of ownership device that you can get that does both high precision indoor tracking and outdoor asset tracking all in one. And monitoring. And monitoring all in one. Um, and in more than that, you know, we have a we have a traditional hardware plus SaaS business model. But we're what we're trying to what we're trying out and want to explore with our customers is a pure lease model where there's no upfront hardware costs uh, and you know. For our, our super, our smallest super tag at a at a once an hour update rate, you know, we're offering leasing models on a five to ten dollars per device per month, no hardware costs 
we, with a with a contract for a certain amount of time. Um, but uh, you know, we're looking for customers that want to get engaged with us uh, immediately. Where we can use our we can deploy our, our not products. too many though not too many not yet. <laughs> You know, <clears throat> a small number right now, and in the next month or two, much larger. Uh, and it's available. No, no, I'm just joking. You know, this this yeah. product has taken a, a long time yeah. to really nail, and you know, there was a while where we were really constrained with what we could do. Sure. But I think those I yeah think those days are over. So we're excited to yeah. kind of blow the doors off this thing. So that's what the follow-on conversations with us and our sales teams would be about. But uh, you know, we want to end the webinar with answering some customer questions and the, the people that have spent time listening to us drone on a yeah, little bit. Yeah, you made it to this point. You win the prize. So, um, uh, yeah, let's uh, do. Where's your thing? Stop sharing the screen. How do you do that? I don't know. Okay, there. Is that going to do it? Yes. There. Yeah. Back. So, Patrick. All right. So, um, uh, so one of the questions was uh, there's a bunch of questions about how do I set up um, more in depth one to one discussions? Who's Email sales at link-labs.com. Yep. Write that in the chat. Sales at link-labs.com. One of, one of our sales professionals will set okay. that up. Yep, right. absolutely. Um, That's an easy one. Just yeah. so next, make them. OK. Um, so I had a hard time trying to focus on the information that you yeah. were sharing. And kind of <laughs> so there was a bunch of um, questions around kind of use cases and kind of what does it cost. Right. So I think people. Would I think it. we. I think we. I think we're. We did that okay. Yeah. In terms of the cost, you know, every single use case and or every single customer's use case ends up being different. So if you have a small scale system versus a large scale system, costs are going to vary. We talked a little bit about the cost, but I think it's best done in the conversation with our sales team. But but maybe I'll just mention a couple of the use cases that we didn't talk about, and we keep a ever growing list of things that we feel like we cover really well. Master, I got my master, master list, list here. Yeah. You know, <clears throat> maybe it's worth also mentioning the the industries that we're focused on, industry verticals. So Airfinder uh, itself, and specifically the Super Tag, seems to be really valuable as a solution in construction, in in discrete manufacturing processes, in oil and gas, uh, in logistics and, and supply chain. There's probably a few others, but those are those are very compelling. Those are four of the five key ones that we're focused on. You know, I think that the, the higher level use cases that we that we see are supply supply chain logistics, production throughput, so that'd be parts and materials tracking, uh, potentially you know in and out Kanban alerting, um, cold chain like we mentioned, and temperature monitoring. Very big growth in that. Yep. Especially uh, you know so mobile items like. Bike sharing, scooter sharing, wheelchairs in airports, uh, tarmac equipment. No, yeah. maybe not. Maybe not wheelchairs. That's an indoor only one. Um, equipment tracking and tool tracking. Um, commercial consumables like gas cylinders, spare parts, auto glass. Um, you know, and and they and there are plenty of others, and and hopefully that sort of I think hits a lot of the uh, the you know the interested use cases that, that people are on the uh, on the webinar are, are want to hear about. But we can talk to you about your use case and see see where it fits. It might just be an indoor air finder application. Yeah. Any other big uh, questions? Yeah. So there's a question about whether we would do any consider doing private labeling. Absolutely. Oh, of course. But maybe not for like three devices. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> no, the partnership model is a really important one, um, and it's worth yeah, mentioning. Yeah. Partner like our our our. We sell a lot through channels, and those channels often white label and rebrand solutions. Absolutely, and so you know, we also do uh, we also do professional engineering. You know, if somebody has a large enough project, we're we're willing to take the behind super this tech. blue wall exactly. is a team of engineers, the best in the world. But what we have is a in the end, it's a reference design that actually is useful across all these use cases. But you know, Patrick, we've talked to customers and that have wanted the the device to be thinner or broader or hardened. And we're not going to customize on our own a bunch of different options, but we can work with customers and third party uh, in industrial designers. And, and yeah, just to drive home a point you made earlier about the Bluetooth devices. So yeah. like for the indoor only, that's why we go down that profile only route. Yeah. So you can use, you know, you know have to, there's just tags all over the place in here right. of different manufacturers that we've loaded, you know, onto usually Nordic based yeah. uh, tags. Yeah, and I'll, I'll just mention something else. You know, in addition, 
we've been working with a couple of customers and in integrating third party GPS tracking devices into our platform because we, you know, in the end, the Internet of Things is a data platform. Most of the companies in the Internet of Things just want to be the data platform and forget about the things. But we decided to move into that space, too. And where well, we, it makes it's, sense. Well, it's because we have cu we have customers on the super tag, but they also have other legacy devices and right. they wanted to have a single platform and that's what software we can review. So we, we can ingest other types of GPS and location data and visualize it in the same software exactly. platform. Um, exactly. So, you know, just like on the Bluetooth side, if we need to find a different device or make a different device to meet a use case, that's what we do with our customers, if yes. we have to. <laughs> um, there's also some questions about international applications, right. um, international roaming. And and yeah, we, we are, uh, we are, we have, at, we're internationally at, we have international aspirations. The, yeah. the biggest thing that's holding us up is we have made the decision to do LTE CAT M1 um, and, and probably NB-IoT. Right. Uh, and just the rollout and the stability and maturity of those networks are limited. So right. as those technologies mature, probably in the next two years, then that's going to kind of open the, the world to us. Right. So um, for now, we're constrained to the United States. Uh, in, in the next couple of months, we'll have uh, devices that can roam into Canada. Uh, but again, that depend and in and in Mexico. But that will depend on the networks being built. And it's, it's easier to get an agreement with the carrier to uh, to ride on their network, but the network has to exist too. So everybody wants to. You need you need both. It's not just the device; it has to be. Yeah, and there's a whole boatload of reasons why cellular roaming internationally, especially in the LTE bands, is hard. Yeah, because there's all these different bands and different. Front end filters, but we're not going to get into that right now. <laughs> That's not this one. That's the next one. Right? Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. we've already given that one. I don't want to do that one. Again. Okay, it's the N3 one. Yeah, go look at the last one. <laughs> there was a, a question on a BLE Wi Fi coexistence experience. I think there's concern Ooh. about. Well, so, yeah. yeah, I mean, one of the cool things about the way our system works is that our tags are not beaconing. Right. So you can have thousands of tags and they really don't talk much. So compared to I would think like five high speed Bluetooth beacons is going to create more energy in the band than, you know, a thousand air finder tags just because they're not beaconing. Um, you know, obviously Bluetooth, at least 4.0 BLE beacon channels are designed to try to fit in between the three main 2.4 gigahertz channels for Wi-Fi. And right. that, that I think works pretty well. I don't, I don't necessarily think that Bluetooth interference is like an additive problem against Wi-Fi. Um, yeah. I think a lack of Wi-Fi coordination mm -hmm. and channel management is probably the bigger enemy. I'm not going to say Bluetooth doesn't, you know, have energy. Yeah. Uh, well, I guess the other thing is, have we seen issues where our our Bluetooth-based system has had performance issues inside of you know enterprise Wi-Fi networks? And, and the answer is no, uh, like not any that we wouldn't have expected. There's obviously collisions, and sometimes there're missed messages, but there isn't like a well, yeah, and because out the, the, the tag is is like smart, so yeah. it, if if it can't connect, it's gonna like try again yep. and like maybe find a different access point. So we we've tried to write a lot in at that low level to mitigate some of that. But and, and Patrick's, yeah, I mean, uh, the, the 2.4 gigahertz band is a, is, a, is full. It's intense. But uh, Patrick's best suggestion is if you have a new, uh, if you have a newer Wi-Fi network, you should just move your Wi-Fi traffic over to 5 gigahertz and let us use uh, 2.4 for, <laughs> for uh, our <laughs> Yeah, anything else, uh, Patrick, that uh, um, There was also, oh, so there was a question about uh, using super tags uh, indoors for location tracking uh, with uh, just reference points. Oh, great! What about it? Um, how can you? How do awesome yeah, is how, that? Yeah. How do you pack it? You know, could we pack it something like that? And yeah, it works? works great because you get the location from the reference point beacons, and then the data is flowing out via LTE. So it's kind of like you just walk in with this magic system that doesn't need to connect to anything other than you know the, the cell phone network. Right. So let's go back. Going back to our manufacturing example, or maybe the specialty rack example, when those racks end up at the manufacturing partner um, facilities, they end up losing them inside of the facility. But if they you just gave them a handful of, of Bluetooth uh, reference points from us and said, "Can you please put this around your receiving doors and you know, you know, meters inside of it, so that we could actually have some visibility into this, and all you're going to have is Bluetooth beacon traffic in here that going to be drowned out by everything else." And we'll know where our things are, and we can tell you where they are. Uh, you know that that's something that's set up at extremely low cost. It doesn't require any additional backhaul, no IT integration, and you have visibility of your super tags when they arrive uh, on site. I mean, you could, in theory, do indoor tracking with super tags 
without our without any of the uh, the LoRa um, uh, service layer that we provide without access points. It's just the aggregation uh, isn't there, and you don't have the ability to do super low cost tags. But absolutely, you could do full indoor tracking if you wanted to. Uh, with just super tags and reference points. Right. And then there was another question confirming that the super tag can actually operate fully in BLE mode when it's. It does. It, it, it does. loves BLE mode. Right. It does. And, and you know, those those configuration settings around how long does the tag wait before it says, I can't hear the AirFinder network anymore, and I transition over to uh, to LTEM and, and my other location technologies, that's settable. We can do it for you. Uh, we, we ship them out in advance on, on the settings that we've agreed to, but it is configurable over the air. It's something that we can change. Uh, and it allows for. Um, you know, both indoor, robust indoor location with our AirFinder network, as, as well as transitioning outside seamlessly. And um, no, the biggest thing is, you know, we'd love them to be inside all the time. They've last uh, they're way bigger batteries than our normal uh, our normal tags, so that they can uh, they can operate in Bluetooth mode for a long time. Yeah, is that is that about it, Patrick? Let me wrap it up. Um... Yeah, I think those cover. The, yeah, the so I just ones. wanted to say thanks to everybody. Um, you know, most of you watching are you know our blog subscribers. You know, we have tens and tens and tens of thousands of people that subscribe to our blog, um, and so we put a lot of work into it. Um, if you're not a blog subscriber somehow and you're on this video, I don't know how that's possible, but head on over to link-labs.com. Um, and also, if you like this, uh, click the like button. And if you didn't like it, click the X in the top uh, top right hand corner of your window. And just to just to close out, we'll be sending a follow up email to everybody that registered and participated. We'll have a link and uh, we'll have a link to to this. If you forget how to get here, more importantly, we'll include the email address that we mentioned so that you can talk to us and our sales team and get started using the super tag. And we're excited to talk to you about it. Thanks for spending time with us. All right, all right.